Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to our War in the Pacific Let's Play series against XTRG. We are into mid-January of 1942. Uh, it is January 15th right now. Uh, the Japanese are moving down the Malay Peninsula, and they are on the way to Singapore, uh, threatening the vital base and the uh, southernmost tip of the Malay Peninsula. Uh, they are also launching an offensive against the Fiji Line, is what we're calling it. Uh, which is in the South Pacific. They've landed on New Caledonia, and we're trying to hold them off there. Otherwise, they could get some air units in and threaten our supply lines with Australia. With that being said, the Fiji line is not an end-all, be-all. Uh, Australia cannot be fully cut off from New Caledonia, so we're kind of happy with that. Meanwhile, we're seeing the typical night phase operations. A lot of submarines, some stupid submarines on both sides have decided that you know what? We're going to go ahead and fire torpedoes at destroyers. And that's generally a bad idea. Although, at least in the case of most of these subs, they're operating in deep waters, so they're able to escape the depth charging relatively easily. You can see there the I-24 escapes there, and our own submarine escaped off the uh, eastern coast of Japan. You may remember last turn, we had a battleship that was returning to Pearl Harbor from bombarding Midway. She was struck by a torpedo. Oh... Fast transport unloading troops just north of Nomaya. Uh, Task Force 17 is unloading troops over the beach at La Foll. Uh, so that's concerning. That means that the troops at Comac on the northern edge of the island are going to be cut off. Unfortunately, I don't have any troops here at La Foya. It's not a uh, flagged base, which means it's basically underdeveloped. But uh, the fact is he's placing troops between us and the troops at Comac, which will accelerate the, the fall of the northern base. We had no illusions about holding the base. Um, long term, but um, yeah. Task Force is retreating from something. I'm not sure what. Maybe it's from our cruisers. We have some heavy cruisers operating out in that area. Uh, we've ordered them to move to Luganville, which we believe is the base of operations for the Japanese uh, moving against New Caledonia, uh, and hopefully also escaping from uh, Japanese carrier planes. Uh, meanwhile, uh, we know the Japanese carrier fleet is to the southwest of uh, New Caledonia, and to the sort of east of the eastern coast of Australia. So we know that the main Japanese carrier force is located in these South Seas. I'm imagining they don't have a ton of fuel. Again, he's way far south here. So I keep waiting to find a tanker task force that is uh, going to be refueling him. We did see one task force, which seemed to be mostly of heavy cruisers moving toward the carriers. Um, but uh, so far... All I, all my intel said is it was heavy cruisers. My cruisers sailed within like three hexes of them and didn't engage. So that was a little frustrating, but uh, it would have been nice to see what had happened. I guess it might be a good thing, though, because if any of our, our ships had taken heavy damage, they would have been sitting ducks for the Japanese carrier fleet. Uh, so our, our ships sailed merrily on their way to the east toward Luganville, and his ships sailed southwest. Meanwhile, it looks like we're getting our first large-scale bombing raid on Bataan. The Japanese have driven the Allied forces in the Bataan... Uh, peninsula back into their defensive positions and the fortifications uh, near Bataan. They've taken the rest of the island of Luzon. They have not moved any ground forces against our troops there yet, uh, but you can see here they are starting the bombing. So they've got 59 Sally bombers and three Lilies, escorted by 21 Ki-43 1B Oscars. We have a very small cap that's defending against these guys. We've got five P-35As, and uh, you can see here we're getting chewed up a bit by the Japanese cap. Um, so, or Japanese escorts. So we're just going to fast forward through this. Nothing good is going to come from this fight. Um, you can see we didn't scratch any of the bombers. Um, and now they're coming in and they're dropping bombs on target. Uh, we did get, we did claim one lily from Flak. Some sallies are being damaged by Flak as well. That's the one good thing is our troops in Bataan have a ton of supply and they have a reasonable amount of anti-aircraft guns. So hopefully we can make the Japanese bombers take some damage and then maybe some of them will crash on their way back. Yeah, Cal, I did notice those cruisers do seem to be heading south toward the carrier battle group, so I guess they could have been tankers. The, uh, the frustrating thing is our recon didn't detect any tankers. If they had, I would have gladly sacrificed three heavy cruisers to knock out some Japanese tankers. That would be absolutely phenomenal. The Japanese have a very small number of fleet oilers and tankers, and every one of them you can sink is sinking gold. Um, with that being said, Japanese lost one Oscar destroyed, one Lily damaged, one uh, Lily destroyed by Flak, and 13 Sallies damaged by Flak. So 
Uh, hopefully, maybe like six or so of those aircraft crash due to their damage before they get home. Meanwhile, none of our fighters were shot down, apparently, and they only did four casualties to our troops. Uh, one uh, non-combatant squad was disabled, so a pretty good result for us there. Meanwhile, he also sent in a second raid. Looks like maybe the coordination on his raid wasn't perfect. And uh, he has 15 lilies going in. We have one P-35 that's trying to engage and uh, drive these guys off. Uh, being driven away by defensive fire. This is one brave fighter pilot attacking a bomber formation all by himself. Uh, claiming at least one lily shot down. So that's uh, a good result if, uh, if this pilot truly did claim a kill. I think these are Philippine Air Force units. I could be wrong, but I think that's what they are. Meanwhile, you can see the lilies are approaching the target and dropping their payloads. It looks like, oh, a couple of them are being destroyed by flak. One destroyed, four damaged, and then one destroyed by flak. So two lilies shot down, four damaged. We'll have to see what the actual re re report. We'll have to see what the actual report is afterwards. But if that is true, I mean, he's not really doing any damage to our ground troops, and he's suffering a lot of damaged airframes. So that's that's a good start for us. Japanese continue to bomb uh, the base at Meden here uh, on the north. I don't know why he keeps bombing that base. We have no aircraft there anymore. Unless it's just a training uh, thing. So we'll have to see. I'm just going to fast forward. We don't have anything. He hit the runway 22 times. Supply base hit three times. Uh, air base hit five times. All that means is he's going to have to spend a lot of time repairing that base when he eventually takes it. I've got nothing there. I've got like two aircraft that are damaged on the ground. Certainly doesn't wor uh, you know, warrant the supply cost he's using against him. But again, it could just be a training raid. It does give him the opportunity to build up pilot experience in, in actual combat. Um... Another carrier raid here, this one northeast of Brisbane. Some uh, light cargo ships. I, I don't even remember what I have sailing in that vicinity, but we've got an AKL here just off the coast of Australia and an AP. Shit. Um, great. I don't think that's a very valuable AP, but it's always uh, a bad day when you lose troop transports. The Allies do not start with enough troop transports at the beginning of the war. Again, this isn't a uh, large one by any means, but uh, it's a bad it's a bad day when you lose him. I guess the one positive is he's he just used six torpedoes on an AKL and an AP. Those are six torpedoes he's not going to get back. He can't refuel and re he can refuel his carrier group, but he can't rearm them with torpedoes. So all the torpedoes that he uses up here are torpedoes he can't use against our cruisers or other ships. Uh, which, you know, aerial bombs are all well and good, but uh, torpedoes are really the real killers of ships for the Japanese air armada. Um, and uh, you can withstand quite a few dive bomber attacks just due to the efficiency levels. Uh, so if he uses all those torpedoes up, he's going to have to return all the way back to truck, I think, uh, to rearm. Unless he has an AE in, uh, in Luganville, which is possible i suppose but i don't even know if those supply carrier groups with torpedoes he's he has a finite number of torpedoes if you remember when our hermes attacked japanese cruiser force off balak poppin uh we only had i think it was 10 torpedoes for the entire light carrier granted our air wing was only 18 aircraft but that just tells you you really don't come up with a ton of torpedoes on your carriers Okay, so we'll have to see. It looks like another bombing raid here in the Malay Peninsula. This one is just north of Johor Bahru. I think we only have one small battalion of troops there. So it took a few casualties, but that's like a 10 attack value unit. Uh, so glad for the Japanese to waste their sorties and ammo on something so unimportant for the defense of Singapore. I mean, yeah, sure, every unit matters, but not doesn't really matter that much, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. 40 Zeros running a sweep over Mersing. We well, don't have any cap there, so it doesn't matter. Aircraft landing. Groups combining at Nomaya. Still no surface combat so far for our uh, cruisers. Thresher is attacking a patrol boat. Hit but no explosion. That is the Mark 14's moniker. If any ship would trademark hit but no explosion, or any weapon would trademark hit but no explosion, it would be the Mark 14 torpedo. Meanwhile, the Japanese are dropping depth charges that are uh, missing the sub for the most part so far anyway. Detonating above the submarine's depth. Detonating above the submarine's depth. 
detonating above the submarine's depth. So this was a common problem, apparently for the British too. I did not know that. I was talking to Tortuga Power, uh, who's a, a fellow YouTuber as well. And he was making, and we play Wolfpack every once in a while, which is a really cool sort of co-op World War II submarine game. And he was telling me that the British uh, early in the war didn't know the German submarines could dive as deep as they could. And so uh, they often draw, had their depth charges detonate too high. The German subs just had to go below like 100 meters or something like that, and the British would never hit them. Um, the American submarines had a similar issue. The first, the Japanese depth charges were very weak and ineffective. They couldn't really do much damage against the American subs. Uh, the American subs were much more resilient than the Japanese thought. And two, the Americans could dive super deep and no one would ever, you know, the Japanese were none the wiser. It wasn't until, uh, a, I think it was a senator or a congressman basically said something to a newspaper that reported basically that the Japanese couldn't hit our subs because they didn't drop their depth charges deep enough. And uh, when the Japanese changed their depth charge settings that... Uh, the Americans were in for a rude awakening, and uh, unfortunately, it, it cost quite a few lives. Um, that being said, more troops being unloaded over the beach at Lafour. So they are going to cut us off there. They did lose a few casualties just to kind of like natural guys crashing and drowning or something like that. Amphibious assaults are, are difficult. Um, a bombardment attack at Wen Cao. So we'll fast forward through that. We didn't lose any troops. Uh, bombardment attack at Mersing. It looks like all of our troops have pulled out of Mersing. So Japan will take the the city of Mersing here on the eastern coast of Malaya. But there is no airfield at, at Mersing yet. So, uh, you know, they can take that base. They have failed to cut off our troops in the Malay Peninsula. And um, that that's good for us. The Japanese just captured some base here to the east of Kukong. We didn't have any troops there. So, whatever. Meanwhile, the Japanese are shock attacking Lo Yang. We've already pulled our troops out of Lo Yang, so they can take Lo Yang for all their, all their jingles. They reduced the fortifications to zero. Allies have no troops there, so have fun shock attacking with that. Hopefully, that hurts their dis their uh, uh, that maybe disperses them or, or adds some disruption to their their force. We're already marching further west into the mountains uh, to the southeast of Siam. So essentially just setting up one roadblock after another, bleeding the Japanese at each one, and kind of sucking them deeper and deeper into China is the idea. Just start putting the engineers in the tubes, fire them instead of the torpedoes. Yeah, that would be a interesting idea. All right, so it looks like the turn's coming to a close. We're going to start getting notices about our various reinforcements. I think the carrier Indomitable uh, arrives. We're getting some transports available at Aden, uh, troop transport at Mare Island, some fighter squadrons arriving, combat battalions, bobcats, U.S., uh, I think, Seabees. And that looks like the end of the turn. So let's go ahead and jump in. All right, and we're back into our turn here. Um, I actually live-streamed this turn on Twitch last night, but I know that uh, a lot of people kind of prefer the short summaries over the... Uh, longer live stream videos, so we're going to do that. Uh, the recording was taken from the live stream, so that was all my initial impressions, but uh, at this point we're now looking at uh, the post live stream period. Um, so this is just the summary video. If you want to check out the whole thing, you can go over to my Twitch channel, which is linked in the description, uh, and you can watch, re-watch the live stream. Now with that being said here, it is January 16th, 1942, uh, and our troops have pulled out of Mersing entirely. He hasn't taken the base yet, uh, but you can see here we have all of our troops are out of uh, Mersing and are now at Johar Baru. I am actually going to pull pretty much all of the troops back with the exception of two Malay battalions uh, or melee battalions, uh, which are going to remain back in sort of a rear guard action. I had thought about uh, forming a defensive position at Johar Baru, but the problem is they're going to ch get chewed up here. This is only jungle terrain, so you get a times two defense bonus. We have some issues bringing supply forward, and we only have level two fortifications. So from that perspective, I'm just going to pull everybody back to Singapore, which is an urban environment, so we get a times four defensive bonus, and we have a level three fort, and hopefully before his guys show up, we'll have a level four fort. If we could get four fortifications and four urban bonus, that would be great. Uh, meanwhile, uh, we are going to fly a fighter sweep with all 64 of our fighter aircraft. We're going to fly a fighter sweep over uh, Malacca, 
Uh, we know he has 37 aircraft here. I pulled all my bombers out of Malay Peninsula, so unfortunately I can't hit his airfields here. But I'm hoping that maybe he has an inferior cap up over Malacca and we might catch some of his aircraft napping uh, and be able to kind of do some damage there. Um, or at least maybe just kind of get in his head and cause him to pull some of his aircraft back uh, for cap duties uh, otherwise. Um, so that's the situation in Singapore. Um, in Palembang, uh, I'm pulling out my cargo ships here and bringing supplies to other bases in the south. I'm no longer going to resupply Singapore. 50,000 supplies for the force that we have in this area. It's less than half the size of the troops at Bataan. is probably sufficient. I don't want to put too many supplies in there because uh, the troops are going to get overrun and they are going to get defeated. And that might happen relatively quickly. That could happen in two weeks. And I don't want to give him a huge haul of supplies. He's already going to get 50,000 fuel from that. So um, we're going to just try and hopefully avoid giving him too much. Meanwhile, we're loading 28,000 fuel on this cargo convoy in Oosthaven. We've got 7,000 already on board. We've got 40,000 fuel in Oosthaven currently. We've got 30,000 fuel in Palembang. So we're really drawing down the fuel on the island of Sumatra pretty well. The island of Java still has barely any fuel. We have one tanker of about 6,000 fuel capacity loading up at Balakpapan to pull out the 30, some of the 30,000 fuel that we have there. Uh, we have other tankers here, 17,000 uh, pulling back to Perth, uh, 16,000 pulling back to Perth here, uh, 8,000 oil moving to Melbourne, uh, and then we've got 21,000 fuel here moving to Perth. Uh, additionally, these guys have 6,000 moving to Perth. Uh, we've got some troops that are moving to Perth. What are these guys anyway? Are these anti-aircraft? Yeah, they are. Uh, we've got 25,000 moving to Perth. 10,000 moving to Perth. So this is over 100,000 more and, and additionally 2,000 more unloading at Perth right now. So another 100,000 fuel is on its way to Australia uh, from uh, the Dutch East Indies, which is great because we can supply our uh, industry and, and our troops in Australia uh, with all of this fuel and oil and whatnot moving down. Meanwhile, as we move down and around the Australian uh, continent, we have the Kidubutai over here. It's saying there's tankers with the Kidubutai. I'm not sure I believe that. Uh, but we know the carriers are here uh, and they're moving northeast. Uh, we also know that the uh, this task force here is moving southwest to meet them. This is if, if there are any tankers, it's probably this force here that we just missed with our heavy cruisers, unfortunately. Um, but um, they're probably meeting up and they're going to resupply the Kidubutai. If they are, that'll be great because it'll sap the ops points of these guys and probably buy our cruisers up here another day. Uh, if they do something somehow, maybe they like strip fuel from a few units and race a select number of carriers north, uh, then that may not matter. Uh, my cruisers are splitting up into two task forces, one with one heavy cruiser and light cruiser and destroyer, another with a heavy cruiser, a light cruiser, and a destroyer. One's going to move north around Espiritu Santos, one's going to move to Espiritu Santos, or to Luganville, and then they're all going to both regroup at Suva. The hope here is that his task forces are lightly guarded enough that a heavy cruiser, a light cruiser, and a destroyer can get in amongst these guys and do some damage, and that we can increase the likelihood of engaging the enemy. It is a 0% moonlight, which means that that uh, basically it's going to be very difficult for our, our ships to detect the enemy, and there's a good chance that this shipping around here gets away from us. So we're moving one directly north and then east, and we're moving one east and then and then south. So uh, it'll depend on where he moves these guys. He may race them north and away from our cruisers. He obviously knows we're here now. He's, le he's detected us at level 10. So we may not even find the enemy. If we don't, though, we should move relatively quickly back to Suva, hopefully outpacing their, their carriers. And if we do engage something, then hopefully we do enough damage to warrant the loss of any cruisers. Speaking of cruisers, we have another force here that I've kind of I've forgotten about, but we have a light cruiser force over here, two light cruisers, the Enterprise and the Dragon, uh, both British cruisers, a E-class cruiser and a um, D-class cruiser, uh, and they're both moving uh, along here into New Guinea. They're going to move along the eastern coast of the Dutch uh, New Guinea area. Then we're going to move into Rabaul. And what they're going to do here is they're really going to try and get in amongst the Japanese convoys if there are any moving between truck and his bases in the south. He has not made any plays. Oh, this is Japanese, isn't it? 
I don't know. It's still us. Uh, he has not made any play here to take any of these bases along the New Guinea coast. So his coverage of air, his air coverage over this area should be pretty light, which should allow these two heavy cruiser or two light cruisers to get in here and hopefully play havoc with any of his supply convoys uh, while remaining out of range of any of his bombers based out of truck. So that's the goal there. Uh, maybe hitting anything, returning back to truck to try and rearm and replenish uh, as long as they're not heavy forces like battleships and stuff. Uh, which they might be, in which case they'll get lost. But the real goal here is to force him to kind of pause and think about it. I mean, he's moved his carriers all the way down here with seemingly no regard for his rear. We've moved these cruisers in here thus far without engaging any heavy enemy forces. So I'm assuming his rear is really lightly guarded. So even if he catches these light cruisers up here and sinks them, Maybe it will make him think like, wait a minute, I need to go back and I need to take some of these bases in my rear because they're really posing a threat to my supply line. That's the hope anyway. Um, meanwhile, um, not a lot to say. He did land some troops at La Foya, so he's got about 2,000 troops here uh, at La Foya. He hasn't taken the base yet, but we don't have any troops there. 13 guns, 2,200 troops, probably more than we can easily repulse. I mean, we could move the 4th Australian and the 39th Australian forward and try and drive them back, but honestly, it's it's not even worth it. Uh, we'd lose so many casualties doing that. We'd probably hinder our ability to actually take uh, Nomaya or hold Nomaya itself. I'm just going to kind of hold myself in position here. I don't have a ton of supplies to play with, only 3,600. Uh, we had another 8,000 that were supposed to unload, but they got driven off by surface task forces. They kind of retreated, uh, so... We're just going to have to deal with the fact that the uh, uh, 44th Indian Brigade up here is cut off and will eventually be destroyed probably in the next week or so. Um, no, at the end of the day, guys, New Caledonia is going to fall. It's just about causing that uh, fall to occur as late as possible, ideally not till February, but um, as long as we can delay it, we can. Meanwhile, we have two submarines moving in, uh, hopefully trying to engage with the Kadubutai or this uh, relief force down here. The Permit and the uh, Porpoise are both moving in to engage. Uh, hopefully, they'll catch the Japanese napping, uh, but we'll see. Again, we don't really know how strong his forces are arrayed against us. Uh, we don't have any other submarines in the area at the moment. We've got one retreating south of Pike, but she's suffered serious damage. And so nobody else is really around here to help. The uh, S-27 is almost out of fuel, so she's returning to Port Moresby. Once she gets refueled, maybe we can bring her in against them. We're also setting up a submarine line between Truck and Luganville in the south, a little bit further south of Truck so that his air units can't or his uh, anti-submarine units can't as easily hurt us here. So we're setting up a tripwire here, again, with the highly ineffective American subs, but maybe we'll hit some convoys or whatnot moving in that direction. Um, as we move east, uh, we have the carrier battle group, which has arrived at Pearl Harbor. Um, let's not take a look at that. We do know that Oklahoma is going to take two months. So the Enterprise is going to take three more days to sort of get back in shape. And the other carriers are all less badly beat up by the sea, the Lexington being the most beat up. And uh, five days, really. Uh, let's make that three. So the, the Lexington should be ready in three days along with the Enterprise so that the whole carrier fleet will be ready to go uh, inside three days. Uh, so she made it back without any damage. The Oklahoma got hit by a torpedo yesterday, you may remember, but the other ships made it back. Meanwhile, down south in New Zealand, our first replenishment convoy from the United States has arrived in the Australian New Zealand theater. Over 30,000 fuel is being unloaded at Auckland. Actually, we've already unloaded 9,900. We've got 29,000 more to go. And this fuel is not only vital for our shipping in the area and for our warships to be able to, you know, to be able to operate, but it's also vital for the economy in New Zealand to operate and create all the supply that we need. So you can see here we've got a couple of cruisers that are repairing. Uh, should take about two weeks for them to all get back up to ship shape. But that 9,000 fuel is going to be parceled out to the different bases here, which all uh, have, like Wellington, for example, in the south, which has light industry and heavy industry. It needs that fuel oil to run uh, its economy and to create that supply to self-sustain the forces on on uh, the northern island of, of uh, or New Zealand. We've got another force here of 38,000 fuel that's moving into Australia down toward Melbourne. Uh, we've got 18,000 fuel moving to Christchurch to fuel the economy in the south here. They've got some heavy industry down there in the southern island. And then we've got another convoy here of about 14,000 moving into Auckland. Uh, these troop or these cargo ships have 78,000 supply that's moving toward Melbourne to help the Australian uh, units there ensure they have enough supply. 
And then we've got another 28,000 moving to Auckland here from this tanker convoy. So some of our early tanker convoys, some of our early logistics here after about a month at sea are finally coming into picture and be, uh, bringing supplies into Australia. Meanwhile, um, I think I mentioned the fighter sweep uh, that's going to be going over in Malacca. Uh, but in addition to that, we've been kind of moving different units around. We have 19 Hurricane 2B Trops, which have arrived at Palembang. They need to get sort of kitted and put together, but they have arrived. So it'll be a couple of days. And once they are ready, then we're going to go ahead and fly them into Singapore and add them to the 65 aircraft that we already have there to bring us up to almost 100, uh, well, closer to about uh, 90 fighter aircraft and with the 19 hurricanes uh, to go with the uh, uh, how many do we have here uh, the 19 hurricanes uh, to go with the 14 18 uh, 24 uh, warhawks will have about 43 modern fighter aircraft in addition to the buffaloes that are already there um, in addition to that we have one other fighter squadron I was considering moving in there, don't we? Oh, yeah, I've ordered one of my P-40 groups to consider upgrading. If if the game will let them, we're going to have these P-40Bs upgrade to 20 P-39D Air Cobras. Uh, they're not the greatest fighter. They do have some serious limitations, uh, but they, they are better than, you know, 20 fighters that are slightly worse than the P-40 are better than four P-40s, right? We can actually get our fighters into the air uh, and uh, intercepting him. So that would give us an additional 15 aircraft plus the 19 Hurricanes. So theoretically, we have 34 fighters uh, on their way to reinforce the troops at Singapore, uh, all of them quasi-modern monoplanes. Uh, so again, that would, that, would, that would strengthen our forces there quite a bit. Um, Rangoon, we've got a lot of tr a lot of our aircraft from the Malay Peninsula have fallen back to Rangoon. Uh, we've got some Buffaloes there. We've got some Blenheim Bombers there. We've got some B-17s there, all sort of forming the Air Force in Burma, which will help resist the Japanese uh, when they do start making their push there. Okay. Uh, in China, we are pulling these troops here in central China back. It may be too late. Uh, for these guys, but we've got a thousand assault value wrapped up here. So we're pulling them back here to Hanyang. Uh, the Japanese are probably moving on Pishang or however you pronounce that. They've got one unit here. I'm assuming it's moving south down here, but we're going to try and pull these guys out west uh, and see if we can get them out. Additionally, the 21st Chinese Corps is going to shock attack at Puchang. Uh, if they take that base, then they're going to move east here, and we maybe we can get between the 50,000 Chinese or Japanese troops at Wang Kao uh, and their base of supply at Chusen, uh, and maybe we can actually cut these guys off. It'll probably take a while to materialize. It'll probably take five or six days. We don't know if our troops at Wang Kao have five or six days left. We've got level two forts. We're trying to build back up to level or level one forts. We're trying to build back up to level two forts, but we're low on supply. We do build some of our own supply here. Um, so there's a, you know, we, we can self-sustain to a certain extent as long as we have some fuel here, which we do. Um, and we do have a reasonable strength of 390 uh, assault value. So if we can get that, you know, if they can hold off for a few more days, we might be able to cut the Japanese off and do them a bit of a headache there. Meanwhile, our troops have all pulled out of Luoyang. Luoyang fell to the Japanese, and these guys are all marching west towards Cyan. They're going to take up positions just a little bit south of Cyan, but they're making slow progress. They're moving some, through some rough terrain, uh, so that's going to take a little bit of time. Meanwhile, we do have our H-81 uh, 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 flying tigers here. 18 of them are going to fly cap uh, just to the north of Wuchou over these three Chinese cores, which are south of Quilin, because I'm assuming the Japanese have moved these troops in here this turn, so I'm assuming they're going to try and hit them with bombers next turn, so maybe we can ambush some of the Japanese bombers and do some damage to their aircraft. Um, speaking of aircraft, the Japanese lost a total of eight aircraft last turn, two air-to-air, -air, three to flak, three to ops losses. We lost two operational losses. Uh, the Japanese aircraft consisted of four Lily 1Bs. They lost two Oscar 1Bs, one Oscar 1C, one Sally 1C, uh, and then one we lost one Catalina one, and one Lodestar. Meanwhile, speaking of reinforcements, uh, the battleship Royal Sovereign has arrived in theater at Aden. Uh, so we actually have uh, a Royal Sovereign uh, class uh, battleship. Uh, with 15-inch guns, eight 15-inch guns. Uh, not very fast, 21 knots. I think this is a World War I-era design. 
but she has arrived at Aiden. She's going to stay there this turn, though, because in our ship availability, uh, sorry, not ship sunk, ship availability, in our ship availability, uh, we can actually check and see we have some pretty important ships coming on online here tomorrow. Uh, so we're going to get a new aircraft carrier tomorrow. Not an American, unfortunately, but uh, we are going to get the British carrier Indomitable. It'll uh, Indomitable. It'll arrive at Aden uh, along with the battleship, which is already there. It's going to come with some 33 aircraft, 12 Fulmer twos, 12 Albacores, which I think are biplane torpedo bombers, and then nine C Hurricanes, uh, Hurricane 1Bs. I really wish this aircraft carrier can carry up to 35 aircraft. The fact that we're only getting 33 is really frustrating. It's a CV with an air wing of 33. Give me a break. Uh, I would love to have... You know, this would be a really potent aircraft carrier if it had... Uh, first off, it can carry up to six more albacores. So in theory, it can increase its air wing uh, closer to its capacity. But if it could increase this air wing for the albacore up to 18... And then it could use the, uh, what would that give us? That would give us a remaining uh, six aircraft. So if it could have 15 hurricane fighters and then the um, 30 strike aircraft or even just 27 if it reduced the Fulmer 2s, that would be a much better aircraft complement. But for the moment, it isn't. We can see what we can adjust. Uh, but that's, that's also coming in at Aiden. Um, additionally, we also have started to receive the uh, Australian forces here at Aden. These are some of our best troops in the entire Pacific Theater. Level 70 experience, level 72 morale. The 17th Australian Infantry Brigade. The 16th Australian Infantry Brigade. And we have more on the way. These are all elements of the 6th Australian Infantry Division, which is uh, all coming from North Africa. These are veterans of the campaigns against Rommel in North Africa. And uh, we have two more units, the uh, 6th Australian Division Cavalry Regiment and the 19th Australian Brigade, uh, another 70 experience, 70 morale, and 75 experience, 75 morale. So we're going to be forming these guys into the 6th Australian Infantry Division, and then we need to figure out where we need to move them. We could move them into the Burma Theater to really uh, strengthen our forces against the Japanese there between that division and between the uh, troops that we already moved into Chunting. Uh, this is what, there's the British Infantry Division. The, where are they? Did we move them? Um, yeah, the between them and the 18th British Infantry Division, it might be a, a really good opportunity to have some really high-quality troops, although the British are not very experienced. Still a full-blown British Infantry Division. So we could have two really good divisions in Burma that would help fight against the Japanese advance there. Or we could potentially send those troops to various islands on the South Pacific to kind of uh, blunt any further Japanese advances uh, and strengthen, you know, maybe move to Norfolk Island or whatever, strengthen our resistance to them uh, and uh, strengthen our hold on Australia. Could be an option, uh, but we'll have to see what we do there. They're still a few days away, so we'll figure that out when they do arrive. Uh, in terms of intelligence, I took a look. There's not really much intelligence uh, worth knowing. There's an AMC at Midway. Unfortunately, our carriers withdrew before they could hit that. That would have been a nice target to destroy. Uh, there is a medium field artillery piece preparing for an attack on Singapore. No surprise there. Some radio transmissions, some locations of other units. Uh, all in all, not a super exciting turn there. And then if we take a look at our ship's sunk last turn... Uh, it was a little bit of a, you know, his carriers continue to ravage. Uh, the McAdoo is a 12 victory point HP, AP. Every AP you lose is, is valuable, but uh, it's a pretty small troop transport. It's not a massive liner or anything. And the cargo ship was only valued at one. So not a lot there. The, um, the aircraft that we shot down... Uh, actually, let's see here. The, the victory value of the aircraft we lost, Catalina 2-engine, Lodestar 2-engine. So that's four victory points there. The Sally's a 2-engine, so that's two. The Oscars are 1-engine, so that's one each. So that gives us five. Uh, and then the Lilies are 2-engines, so that gives us eight more. So that actually gives us 13 victory value against the four that we lost. So a positive of nine when you consider the ships that we lost as well. Uh, subtract the one gives us eight. So we we're only a negative four that turn between our ships and our air units in terms of victory value that turn. Um, that doesn't include any land yet losses, but there's, that's more complex to look into all the different units that were lost there. Um, I think I already mentioned that we've got a lot of uh, fuel oil coming out of the Dutch East Indies here, about 100,000 more fuel heading into Australia. 
Uh, and so, I mean, that's kind of this turn. It was a relatively quiet turn. Uh, some troop movements in China that we're kind of keeping an eye on. Um, there's some, uh, obviously, some resupply going on at Rangoon. Moving some troops around there. Continuing to build up the fortifications there. And I think that's about all I have. The Prince of Wales is still about 24 days away from Cape Town, uh, given her slow speed, but her floating damage continues to go down. It's down to 51, which is the maximum it can drop to without repair facilities. So they're at least kind of keeping things under control on the ship uh, as it kind of heads toward Cape Town. And some other logistical stuff going on, but nothing really worth showing off on the turn. Um, we did get some more hurricanes, so actually that's the one other thing is I'm loading two hurricane squadrons up here, moving them to India. Um, I know, you know, I, I've learned with with rough experience, you never want to send a squadron on a single aircraft. You should always split them up against other ships, but because they're moving off map and there's only four hexes they're moving on map, and I'm pretty damn sure there's no Japanese subs between the off map and Karachi, I'll take that risk and move them in. So two more Hurricane Squadrons are going to move into India, and then we're going to move them forward to Burma to increase our strength of uh, fighters in the Burma Theater. And I think that's all I got for you. I got some subs in around Japan. They're not really doing anything. Uh, the carriers are, are working. The Oklahoma is going to take two months to repair, unfortunately. Uh, how much? Uh, how many torpedoes does this guy have left? Eight? Eight torpedoes left on the plunger? Why don't you sink the ships that are there at Midway, guys? Um... But yeah, I think that's all I got for you this turn, guys. So we'll see how things play out uh, once we kind of get the uh, turn over to Exterior G. But I hope you guys are enjoying the series. As always, feel free to leave your comments. And if you did want to see the live stream as it all unfolded, check out the link in the description. Head on over to my Twitch channel. Make sure to follow me there. Uh, if you have Amazon Prime, you can certainly subscribe as well. That's free. You can subscribe up to one channel for free. Uh, it does support the channel. That's enough of my shtick. Uh, I'll go ahead and sign off, guys. Hope you enjoyed uh, the video. And until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying thank you for watching, and I'm out.